gather on this uh, Monday of the second week of Ordinary Time, and also the day that we commemorate the birthday of Martin Luther King, Jr. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us prepare ourselves by calling to mind our need of God's uh, mercy and understanding, the forgiveness and patience of one another, and praying that we will be even stronger witnesses to justice and truth. Lord Jesus, you come with salvation for all people. Lord, have mercy. You come to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You send us forth to announce good news. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who have revealed that peacemakers ought to be called your children, grant, we pray, that we may work without ceasing to establish that justice which alone ensures true and lasting peace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power, the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. 
Yours is princely power in the day of your birth in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, alleluia. <coughs> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples of John and the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected, Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then on that day they will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth to an old cloak, or if they do, its fullness pulls away the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> to get at the meaning of this, um, the, the meaning and the importance of this passage from the Gospel of Mark, we, we have to reflect a little bit about the purpose uh, in the days of Jesus and in our own days, the, the purpose of fasting. Well, there, there was a practice of fasting at different times uh, during the year and around different festivals in preparation. Fasting was in preparation. Um, we fast before we receive communion, uh, before we come to Mass, in preparation for receiving communion. Some of us, a lot of us, are old enough to remember when we had to fast from midnight before uh, you went to Mass on Sunday or any day. So it's in preparation. And so um, the, the Pharisees and their disciples um, are fasting in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. And so there's many different occasions for them to fast, to remember that they are awaiting the Messiah, the promised one of God. So they complain that the disciples of Jesus aren't fasting. Well, the disciples of Jesus who are companions on, on the way with Jesus realize that they are in the midst of the promised one. They are companions with Jesus, the promised one of God. And the Pharisees have failed to recognize that. They have failed to recognize and appreciate and accept who Jesus is, that Jesus is the promised one. And so just like uh, at a wedding feast, you don't fast when you're in the midst of the full wedding party because that's a time of rejoicing and feasting and drinking. Uh, so the disciples of Jesus are not fasting because they stand in the presence of the promised one. The promised one, as Jesus foretells, that will be taken away from them, and then they will have to return to fasting and expectation of his return. We're kind of in that in-between time. We're not exactly in the presence, in the full presence of the bridegroom of, the, of Jesus, 
of the Son of God, but, and we are approaching in our Mass, we are approaching communion with Him uh, and with one another at communion time, so we're kind of yes and no. So it's not a bad idea for us to have times of fasting in our lives, to remember that the full presence of the Lord, uh, the glory of the Lord is still expected in our lives. But at the same time, we are, like the disciples, companions through life with the Lord, with Jesus. We're yes and no, we're yes and not quite, we're in that middle time. So as we, um, as we prepare ourselves to receive communion today, um, we fast mind and body and spirit uh, in preparation for what we are to receive. Let us stand and offer our prayers. We pray for ourselves and we pray for all the members of the church that as we journey through life, we may, um, we may honor those moments of fasting and preparation for our receiving of the glorious presence, the return of the Lord, we pray. On this day that we commemorate the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., we pray that the justice and the peace, the understanding that he worked so hard uh, to bring about may, may grow in our country, in our hearts, in our lives, and throughout the world, we pray. We pray for all those who are ill and those who are recovering from surgery, we pray. Let us pause a moment to bring to mind the other prayers that we have today. For these we pray. For Barbara Ann and for all we promise to hold in prayer today, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O gracious and holy God, Come close to your people, hear our prayers, and grant our needs. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer. With earth, earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us our spiritual food. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our offering may be acceptable to God. May the saving sacrifice of your Son, the King of Peace, offered under sacramental signs that signify peace and unity, strengthen, O Lord, concord among all your children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us a share in his riches. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of the cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who follow him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with the angels and the saints and the whole company of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as well that end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, you are holy, O Lord. You are the fullness of holiness. And we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, after they had finished supper, Jesus took the cup. Once again, he gave you thanks, and giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted as worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Blessed Apostles, with St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray those words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look then not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another some sign of the peace of Christ.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Be still on us, O Lord, the spirit of charity, so that sustained by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, we may be effective in nurturing among all the peace that he has left us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, the blessing of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended, let us go forth in the peace of God.
Pastor tomorrow, right? 